Beneath the streets of New York lies a machine that never sleeps, a living network of tunnels, steel, and motion. It's loud, hot, and endlessly crowded. Yet this labyrinth of rails remains the lifeblood of the city, carrying between 4 and 5.5 million riders every day. Spanning 472 stations and more than 665 miles of track, it's one of the largest transit systems on Earth. But scale alone doesn't define it. Complexity does. According to Bloomberg, the New York City subway ranks among the world's most complex systems, shaped by its 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year operation, and by more than a century of layered history. This is the story of how one of humanity's greatest engineering feats evolved from pickaxes and manual levers into a modern organism that cannot stop breathing. At the dawn of the 20th century, New York faced a new challenge, moving millions quickly through a growing metropolis. Engineers and laborers answered by carving tunnels beneath the streets using a brutal technique known as cut and cover. Entire blocks of pavement were ripped open, trenches dug by hand and steam shovel, and new tunnels bricked over before the city was paved again. When the first line opened in 1904, it ran barely nine miles, but it was a revolution. It was the Interborough Rapid Transit, IRT for short. Narrow tunnels, smaller trains, and ornate stations like City Hall built as cathedrals to progress. Within two decades, competition arrived. The Brooklyn Manhattan Transit, or BMT, built wider tunnels for bigger trains, while the city launched its own independent subway system, or IND, in 1932. Each had its own standards, power systems, and signaling. When the three were finally unified in the 1940s, they fit together awkwardly. The IRT cars, just 2.7 meters wide, could never share track with the larger 3-meter BMT and IND trains. The city subway had become a patchwork, a physical memory of private rivalry welded into public infrastructure. Behind the rumble of trains is an invisible choreography powered, astonishingly, by hand. Deep in control towers across the city, operators still guide trains using interlocking machines, massive banks of steel levers installed nearly a century ago. Every switch of track and change of signal depends on human precision. A single worker can merge trains, change lights, and keep express service running. But if they step away, the entire junction halts. About 85% of the system still relies on this analog signaling, each lever clanking into place as trains race by above. These towers are the subway's beating heart, manual, mechanical, and increasingly fragile. Many wires are trapped in cloth from the 1930s. Replacement parts must be custom made in MTA workshops. When riders hear of signal problems, it often means someone underground is tracing a single dead wire by hand. The result is delay, roughly 4,000 signal-related disruptions every month. The system works only because thousands of people keep it running, operating levers that should have been retired decades ago. The subway structure magnifies its difficulty. Engineer William Parsons envisioned express and local service running side by side, a four-track layout along Manhattan's spines, 8th, 7th, Broadway, 6th, and Lexington Avenues. Trains interline across boroughs and through underground flyovers and junctions, creating more than 200 crossing points known as interlockings. This design gives riders extraordinary reach. A trip from Brooklyn to the Bronx often requires only one transfer, but it also makes the system impossible to pause. There is no yard space to store all the trains. Maintenance and repairs happen while the system runs, often inches from live rails. The same feature that makes the subway powerful, its nonstop motion, is what makes it nearly impossible to modernize. Today, the century-old network is undergoing its most ambitious transformation yet. The MTA is replacing its fixed block signals, those analog relays and glowing bulbs, with communications-based train control, or CBTC, a digital system that tracks each train in real time and allows them to run closer together. Lines like the L and 7 have already converted, now among the most reliable in the system. Inside the operations control center in Midtown Manhattan, rows of monitors show trains gliding across the city in real time, a 21st century mission control for a 20th century machine. Projects like the Second Avenue Subway Phase 2 promise slow expansion, but modernization is the real frontier. New contactless payment systems, station refurbishments, and digital signals are bringing gradual order to the chaos. Keeping the subway alive is a full-time act of preservation. Thousands of workers labor overnight to weld rails, repair signals, and clean stations so that trains can roll again by dawn. For the millions who depend on it, this network is more than transportation. It's a shared act of faith in motion itself. 
After more than a century, the New York City subway remains the beating heart of a restless metropolis, a living monument to human endurance, ingenuity, and the impossible art of keeping chaos on schedule. If you learned something and enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave a comment. We want to hear from you.